A pressure pot is actually a very simple, though often misunderstood, piece of equipment. Here you can see a basic drawing of the parts needed to make one work properly. Pressurized air is introduced into the system from an air compressor. Compressed air contains moisture. Your system should include a water separator to remove that water. There are several different types. It is preferable to choose one that has a clear bowl, so that you can see when it needs emptying. It should also be easy to drain and positioned where you can easily catch the water. The pressure regulator allows you to control how much air pressure goes through your pot. It is actually a delicate instrument and can be damaged if used improperly. Your regulator should be used only to increase your pressure, never to decrease it. If you find your operating pressure is too high, close the supply valve and depressurize the pot. Reduce the regulator pressure open the supply valve and increase the pressure to where you want it. Decreasing the regulator while the supply valve is open can introduce abrasive media to the inside of the regulator and that media can destroy a regulator. The supply valve is used to allow or stop the air entering the system. The choke valve is in the main airflow line and should remain completely open. If you are having problems with clogging, no grid flow, Closing the choke valve diverts the air flow into the upper part of the pot while shutting off the main air flow. By shutting off the main air flow, all the flow must go through the pot, increasing the pressure inside while dropping the pressure on the main flow side. This forces media through the system without the benefit of the main air flow to lubricate and will send a plug of abrasive down the hose, often clearing out clumps or debris that interferes with smooth flow. There are times during very high humidity when running partially choked can help temporarily, but proper regulation through the media valve is the most efficient and proper use of a pressure pot. The pressure pot itself comes in many styles, but the basic functionality is the same. If available, you should try to find a pressure pot with a dish top for filling rather than ones requiring a funnel. There are some modifications that can be made to pressure pots to make them more efficient and those modifications are discussed later. The media valve at the bottom of the pot dribbles abrasive into the airflow. If the pot was not pressurized, airflow would simply bubble up into the pot and be useless. By equalizing the pressure in the pot with the airflow, the abrasive is forced into the airstream at the same pressure as the basic airflow, allowing the mixture valve to regulate the amount of abrasive added to the airflow. The output from the pressure pot assembly is a mixture of abrasive and compressed air that is carried through a flexible hose. Because we want to stop and start while blasting, the most common way to control the busy end of a sandblasting setup is to use a dead man valve. Commonly these are spring loaded stoppers at the nozzle end of the abrasive hose. These are required safety mechanisms that shut off the air and media flow automatically should the operator lose control for any reason. If the operator were to pass out without these safety features, the abrasive could do untold damage. Here are three variations of a squeezer type valve, all using spring-loaded handles and a stop block. On the left is a cougar valve, which has a spring-loaded interior flow blocking mechanism. On the right is a 38 Special, which uses a spring-loaded handle and a stop block. The pressure relief valve is an addition you should make to facilitate depressurizing your pot when you're through using it or when you need to load more abrasive into it. Many pots come with a small brass pop-off valve that usually has a wire ring on it that can be pulled to open the valve. This is a safety feature that is designed to protect you from injury in case of overpressure and should not be used to depressurize your pot. Using it for this purpose can damage it because media comes out with the air and can stick in the valve, causing it to no longer function as designed. Adding a T in line either where the air enters the pot or in the supply line after the regulator and supply valve will allow you to insert a ball valve and hose to depressurize your pot with. The valve should be mounted with the handle easily accessible and the discharge hose should be secured near the bottom of the pot and aimed in a safe direction. If you are using a cabinet, the simplest way to do this is to use a length of garden hose, exhausting it directly back into the cabinet. When using a valve, always open it slowly and remember to close it as soon as your pot has depressurized. 
Opening the supply valve allows air to flow from the compressor source through the water separator and the regulator and then into the pressure pot to pressurize the container. At the same time, it allows air to flow through the second leg of the T to the media valve at the bottom of the pot. Adjusting the media valve controls the amount of abrasive contained in the compressed air output. Opening the valve adds more abrasive. Closing the valve reduces the amount of abrasive added to the airflow. The optimum amount of abrasive added to the airflow is achieved by trial and error depending upon the object being blasted, but the optimum in every case is to use the ratio of air to abrasive that achieves the desired results. A good example would be for shading you might only want a whisper of airflow with very little abrasive. For carving the preference would be a higher airflow with more abrasive. It's pretty easy to understand too little abrasive fl flow no work gets done. Too much abrasive causes the grit to fight against itself. If your abrasive flow is too high the incoming abrasive is impeded by the rebounding abrasive. When the grit hits the surface it must get out of the way of the incoming grit. If your abrasive flow is too high, you are in effect sandblasting your own grit instead of the surface you want to blast. When you're finished sand carving, close the supply valve. And if you've installed one, open the pressure relief valve to depressurize the pot. If not, you can continue to shoot abrasive out your nozzle to depressurize the pot. The relief valve just helps save abrasive. When you first set up your pressure pot, there are several steps that you can take to learn and understand the adjustability functions. First, completely close the media valve. The valve will not be in line with the body of the valve. Also, close the supply valve and pressure relief valve if installed. Next, be sure the choke valve is completely open. The handle will be in line with the body of the valve. Ensure that your pot is clean of all oil, moisture, bird's nests, etc. If your pot is new, it will most likely be shipped with a coating of machinist oil to keep it from rusting. Add your media, being sure to strain it through a screen to remove any foreign debris from it. Sieves made to fit a 5 gallon bucket with precise mesh sizes for different media can be purchased, but a piece of window screen will usually do the job. Connect your air supply and check the regulator for pressure by looking at the gauge or by gently cracking open the supply valve and listening at the top of the pot. Stick your hand in the airflow at, from the top of the pot to get a feel for the airflow. Close the supply valve and pressure relief valve if installed and close the top of the pot. If your pot is a funnel top, pull up on the handle sealing the hole and slowly open the supply valve. At this point your nozzle should be charged with air only. Always be sure your nozzle is secure and aimed in a safe direction. Open the nozzle and experiment with airflow by aiming at a piece of cardboard or rag until you get a feel for what it is doing. Slowly open the media valve and watch closely the effect. This valve's job is to regulate how much media gets added to the airflow. The only times this valve should be wide open are momentarily to help clear a clog or when the air is completely turned off and you are emptying the pot of media. As you slowly open the valve you will see media exiting the nozzle. Too little media will be an intermittent flow that is useless for blasting. Too much flow will flood the line with media causing burping which is at best annoying and a waste of air. For most work you will want to sneak up on the right flow which is slightly beyond the point where the nozzle sounds like a spitting cat. The most useful will be a steady hissing sound with a steady flow of media. You can have this hissing while still flowing too much media, so the best method of adjustment is adding a media until it is functioning properly and stopping there.